I came to this country in the aftermath of civil war in Bangladesh. I was six, nearly seven, and um, I didn't speak a word of English. I uh, literally came from a village in Bangladesh and um, my family came to live in the outskirts of East London. I realised um, how important it was that people knew their rights and were able to advocate on their own behalf um, because there was an awful lot of discrimination uh, that was experienced and um, disadvantage arising out of people, for example, not having uh, financial resources, not having the ability to perhaps speak English um, and to be able to really um, fight for their rights. And um, so inevitably, as a lot of immigrant children were, I was drawn into all of this. And I think all of that experience um, then led me to think about my career. And I felt I was quite good at public speaking at school. And it seemed to me that I'd studied the right subjects um, and had done well academically and thought, that a career actually in the law and particularly uh, as a barrister uh, would be one uh, that I could actually entertain. And my parents did face challenges in um, allowing me to go to university. Um, the community that I come from is actually quite conservative and at the time the expectation was that the boys would go and work as waiters in Indian restaurants and the girls would be married off and keep a home and have children. There was never really any possibility that I would be allowed to go away to university um, because that would mean going away from home and not having the parental oversight uh, that members of the community thought would be required. Um, and so even though my school had considered that I perhaps should consider applying for Oxbridge. That wasn't an option because um, I would have to have remained home. Um, and part of that then was that I got married very young and I was engaged um, straight after my A-levels and married at the end of my first year at university. And that enabled me uh, to go to university uh, without facing uh, criticism and I was expected to perform all the duties of a Asian Muslim wife within the extended family whilst undertaking my studies as well. A typical day for me would have been ensuring that everybody uh, had their breakfast, um, going to my classes, um, returning home, uh, making sure that I did the cooking and the cleaning uh, for the family before uh, settling down to get on with my studies and writing essays, etc. That was a way of life uh, that was common for women of my background. Uh, it has its advantages as well because you have the support of an extended family network and for example when I came to have children I had ready-made childcare that I didn't have to pay for um, and so it, it's perhaps difficult for people sometimes to understand and it's very easy to see it all through a very negative sort of victim-led lens uh, but in fact I come from a community that has collectivistic values rather than individualistic values and um, there are pros and cons in relation to each, I think. We were a real mixed bag of practitioners of different levels of call, um, very diverse. Um, we had plenty of white male middle class practitioners. Uh, we also had uh, BAME practitioners, uh, a good mix of men and women. It was a very diverse set of chambers. 
and we were determined to do things a little bit differently and we saw ourselves as a community resource as well and so we undertook a lot of uh, voluntary work within the local community. Right from my teenage years I was involved with voluntary sector organisations and charities uh, that existed to improve conditions for women and children in particular. And uh, so I had hands-on experience of handling cases and advising people both in a voluntary capacity and in a paid capacity. Um, I was also chair of Ashiana, which is the only dedicated forced marriage refuge um, in the country. And through that work, I obviously developed an expertise and when it came to consideration of legislation, I was obviously part and parcel of campaigning groups uh, run by women to try and address changes uh, to the law um, in areas such as forced marriage, FGM, domestic violence. And so that meant that um, policy makers and government sought my advice and I was asked to advise and also to assist in the drafting of legislation. I think the Forced Marriage Civil Protection Act of 2007 has uh, had a tremendous impact on the law and the practice of law and most importantly on the lives of uh, usually women, uh, but also sometimes men and children. Um, it has been a huge success. When I entered the profession, I had absolutely no thought whatsoever about becoming a judge. Um, I really didn't think it was something that was open to me and I didn't think someone like me could achieve a position like that. And it happened incrementally um, that I came to a position where I thought I'm going to apply and really it started with recognition of my skills by judges who approached me um, and said that I should think about becoming a judge and so I made the application it was by open competition through the Judicial Appointments Commission I applied to be a recorder and um, it was a very challenging exacting process. Um, there were a number of assessments and tests that I had to undergo and I was successful. Um, and yes, it was um, really pleasing to be able to have achieved that. And for me, I think it was really important um, for the community that I come from, that actually someone from their community had succeeded in a profession that was viewed as being very establishment. I think it is essential that we have judges who are women in leadership roles as well as BME judges because that makes a difference in terms of career progression. And I think it definitely encourages a lot of young people from BME backgrounds, particularly women, to consider a career in the law where otherwise they might have been deterred from doing that. And I think women's involvement in the law um, has resulted actually in concrete changes in the law. Um, it was women's campaign groups working alongside usually female barristers and solicitors who brought about changes, for example, to the defence of provocation in murder. It was a woman president of the family division that, in a judgment, recognised the importance of domestic violence as a harmful practice impacting upon the well-being of usually women and children. Um, and I think all of those changes uh, has been for the advancement of society as a whole.